Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraAutomation.com and welcome to another section of our continuous integration development and delivery with Azure DevOps course. And in this section we are going to be talking about deploying applications in Azure Container Service with Azure DevOps 2019. So if you remember in our previous section we were discussing about deploying applications in an Azure App Service and that was kind of very very interesting because it's all something that you are going to be creating a provisioning template you're going to be deploying that within the Azure App Service but today we are going to be dealing with a different criteria altogether which is nothing but the Azure Container Service. So containers are becoming the preferred way to package, deploy and manage the cloud applications. Azure Container Instances offers the fastest and simplest way to run a container in Azure without having to manage any virtual machines and without having to adapt a higher level service. An Azure Container Instance is a great solution for any scenario that can operate in an isolated containers including simple applications, task automations and build jobs. For scenarios where you need to full container orchestration including service discovery across multiple containers, automatic scaling and coordinated application upgrades can be done using what is called as the Azure Kubernetes Services. And once again, Azure Kubernetes Services is something that you can use to scale up your Docker container into multiple nodes. And again, Docker containers and Kubernetes are something that I have already discussed in my Udemy courses as well as in YouTube uh, video channel for free. So please go ahead and watch there where you can learn how to work with Docker containers and how you can deploy an application with the Docker containers and stuff. And a Kubernetes is something which is used to scale up your applications and run in a multiple different nodes. And you can also monitor the node and you can see how the pods actually automatically resurrect from the death to life in a matter of second. That's the power of the auto scaling feature of the Kubernetes itself. So Azure has what is called as Azure Kubernetes services to do the exact same job. So again, if you just quickly see the benefits of Docker itself, its support for Linux and Windows Server container, flexibility to support microservices and traditional app workload, integrated graphical user interface based management and operations, granular role-based access and support of lightweight directory and Azure Active Directory integration and end-to-end -end security model for more security supply chain. So these are the great thing that is available within the uh, Docker itself. And again, as I said before, we are not going to be discussing about Docker, but since we are going to be creating a, an Docker image and then we are going to be deploying that within the Azure container service, we need to know a little bit about Docker and why we are really going towards Docker uh, instead of the uh, Azure app service or the on-prem solution that we discussed earlier in our sections. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to my Microsoft Edge Chrome browser. Alrighty, so I'm in my Azure DevOps portal. And as you can see that in our previous section, we actually created a release and then we also deployed within the Microsoft Azure over here and we saw how we can access the application using this particular URL and everything was working fine without any problem which is awesome. But this time we are going to be creating the Azure Docker services and again we are going to be using what is called as a container registry. I have already created a container registry here as you can see here it's Exit Automation uh, registry where you can see there is something called as Execute Auto Registry and within this registry uh, I can see that I have certain access keys which I can use with and this access keys is something that I will be using for uh, my Azure Docker to connect with and then I can work with this particular registry, right? So this is going to keep track of all my Docker container that I will be building. And again this time instead of creating a Docker altogether from the Docker command and stuff, I'm actually going to be cheating to use the Docker uh, from my Visual Studio itself. So I'm actually going to open my Visual Studio 2019 and here I'm going to create a new project this time. Uh, it's going to be an ASP.NET Core web app project uh, and then I'm going to hit next and I'm going to call this as Udemy uh, Docker app and I'm going to hit uh, create. And you can see that the web app is actually selected here, which is fine. I'm going to select that. And you can see that this framework that I'm using is a .NET Core uh, framework, which is fine. And you can see that we have something called as Enable Docker Support. 
So this checkbox is currently checked, which is cool. I actually need this to be checked. So I'm just going to be leaving this as it is. And I'm going to run this guy uh, within a Linux operating system. So I'm just going to uh, leave this as it is as well. I'm just going to double click that and you can see that it's going to create a new project for me, which is the Udemy Docker app project. There you go. It has been created right now. And you can see that we now have what is called as a Docker file. So this Docker file is something being added from the Docker file uh, because we specified it is like a Docker and that's the reason we are getting a Docker uh, file over there, which is pretty cool. No worries on that. And now in order to run this particular code within your local machine, make sure that you have a Docker for Windows installed within your machine if you're running that in Windows or if you're using Mac, then you should have a Docker on Mac so that you can run this particular project. So now what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to write a single line of code or maybe a single piece of code and then I'm just going to run this particular code here and I will quickly show you that it is going to run the particular application for us within a Docker container this time. And there you go that I have this particular application up and running for me within this particular Docker container. So you can see that it is running in the local host of the 44375 port and this is the Udemy Docker app that I just created. So you can see that this particular app is currently running in a Docker uh, image uh, or Docker container. So if I just open a command prompt, I can quickly show you how it looks like. So Docker PS hyphen A, if I just type it, you can see that we have all these uh, different images and you have this Udemy Docker app, this one, which is currently running in my local machine and you can see that it is up and running for like 44 seconds from here, right? And if I if I show you what are the images I have got, uh, you can see that I have different images, something like uh, Azure Final, Udemy Docker app, uh, and there is a web app Docker and many different uh, Docker containers uh, pulled from the actual repository of the Docker Hub. So this is the way that we can run a uh, code using the local Docker. But now that we have to deploy this particular application into the Microsoft Azure Docker and we need to see how it actually works. So for doing that, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm not directly going to run that over there in the Azure Docker container. Rather, I'm going to check in this particular code into Microsoft Azure service and then from there, I'm going to run the deployment of our application from the Azure DevOps service to Microsoft Azure Docker service. So for doing that, I'm just going to right click and I'm going to hit publish and you can see that this publish actually has got uh, what is called as an app service. This is something that we discussed in our previous video. There is app service for Linux and there is a container registry. So I'm just going to go with this container registry this time and instead of selecting the create new registry, I'm going to use the Docker Hub and once again guys, the Docker Hub is not something that you need to select for doing this but actually I'm going to do this to cheat as if like I'm going to be doing something else here. Uh, so I will quickly uh, enter my credentials to connect with my Docker Hub. I'm actually, I'm going to cancel this particular uh, deployment uh, because I'm not really going to be publishing this yet. I'll be talking about this in our upcoming videos of this particular uh, course. But as of now, I've just canceled this. And then I'm going to use this continuous delivery option over here to actually connect with our Azure DevOps service and then I'm going to use the Microsoft Azure portal to deploy my application from the Azure DevOps service, which we'll be doing in our next video.